Let me ask you a question. Are you a fan of the courtroom scenes in A Few Good Men? If so, then I think you're going to like this movie too. Welcome everyone to FF Plus. This is your outlet for reviews that are simple, short, and spoiler free. I'm your host, Aaron White. And as usual, I'm not going to waste any of your time. We're going to get right on in to this review. I'm here to talk to you about the Kane Mutiny Court Martial, coming to us from Republic Pictures through Paramount Plus with Showtime. It stars Kiefer Sutherland, Jason Clark, Jake Lacey, Monica Raymond, Lance Reddick, Louis Pullman, Jay Duplass, and Tom Riley. It is directed by William Friedkin, written by William Friedkin, and based on the 1953 play, The Kane Mutiny Court Martial, by Herman Wouk, which was itself based on Wouk's 1952 novel, The Kane Mutiny. Cinematography is by Michael Grady and it is edited by Darren Navarro. It runs 108 minutes. What's it about? A naval officer stands trial for mutiny after taking command from a ship's captain he felt was acting in an unstable fashion, endangering both the ship and its crew. Now, to be completely upfront and transparent, I have a personal investment in this particular movie, this particular story. It's very relatable for me. I decided to break out my Navy chief hat just for this occasion. I was in the military for a couple of decades. My very first duty station was actually on a minesweeper, which is what the ship, the Kane, in this story is. In the original film, it's actually a destroyer minesweeper because it's old. It's back in the 50s. But the story has been updated for the modern day. It's set in the present, and they actually use the modern minesweeper. They're called the Avenger class, and my first ship was actually the USS Avenger, MCM-1. I took part in operations in the Persian Gulf, just like they talk about doing in this movie. And the big event that is the culmination of all of the things that happen that lead up to the alleged mutiny is the ship going through a big typhoon. And it being very, very dangerous because the ship is kind of thrown all over the place. I've experienced that myself. I've gone through a hurricane on a minesweeper. So I feel very close to this source material here. And I understand that not everybody's going to have that. But I'm trying to review this as unbiased as possible. And I just wanted to to tell you a little bit about my history. I, I like that the movie does a really good job of updating it, but keeping 90% of the plot the exact same. It, it works today just like it did back in, I think, 1954 when the a movie came out. 1952, I said, was the novel. So Kiefer Sutherland is playing the captain of the USS Kane, Lieutenant Commander Quig. And he is majorly channeling Humphrey Bogart in his performance. You can see it in his mannerisms. He has a nervous kind of a tick where he is just constantly fidgeting with his fingers. He's sort of shaking. He's, he's always tense. And when he speaks, he's kind of on edge. And he does a really strong job of portraying a person that you might consider to have some sort of mental health problem. And that plays a big role in the point of this movie and the trial that is to come as to his fitness of being a commanding officer. And he just really comes across as your very prototypical, proud Navy officer who is experienced and is absolutely convinced that everything he has done is right or for the better good even when he may have stretched the limits of what he probably should be doing. Now, the man who ultimately relieved his captain of command, the XO of the ship, his name was Lieutenant Merrick, and he is being defended by Jason Clark playing the attorney. This is the second time this year that Clark has absolutely killed it in a role where he is just given the business to people on a stand, or in some sort of examination situation. He is so fiery and so calculated, and I just love watching him talk. 
Lance Reddick. This is his final role in a film. And man, I am going to miss this guy. He has such an incredible command and presence here. He plays the head judge of the Naval Board that is hearing this particular court-martial case. And he's fantastic in this. Uh, again, it, it, it's a good note for him to go out on. But at the same time, it just makes you really even more sad that we lost him far too soon. This is also writer-director William Friedkin's final film. And I think that it's a strong one to be the last in his filmography. He's always been somewhat interested in stories that are told in the gray area of human behavior. He doesn't really believe in black and white, thinks everything is somewhere in the middle, and this is a story that leans into that as well. As the testimony goes on, we see him explore this really masterfully through situations that arise where we are kind of forced as a viewer and as the court is doing in the movie to examine the idea of mental illness and specifically how that can be defined differently based on the person observing it. It also deals with ideas of ego and of leadership experience. Those are the things that kind of come together to ultimately bring these officers into a situation where there's conflict about the decision making. And it makes us confront that in a way that I found really enjoyable and really powerful from a self-reflective point of view. It's an incredibly absorbing film right from the start. We see all these different perspectives about what it means to be in command and how the approach should be to accomplishing that per naval standards and per standards of integrity and per standards of human decency. All of this sort of just snowballs as the film progresses up into this incredibly incisive final scene with Jason Clark where he gives a little bit of a monologue and a speech that's just like a slam dunk, leave you with a punch in the gut kind of a moment. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful, and Jason performs it to perfection. I think the way that this film gets into our head and has us start to think about who we're rooting for and why is important, and specifically the way that it deals with the idea of whether or not Commander Quig is mentally ill it handles this in a way that I think is important for and relevant for the time period now in a way that maybe it really hasn't been in several decades before. I think people are at a point where they're able to engage with this, and I hope that that's what happens when you watch the movie. Cinematically, I really appreciate that it's not showy, it's not flashy, just for the sake of it. Uh, it feels like a stage play, just like it is based on. The camera is always very sharp and in focus. The editing is extremely tight, but Friedkin rightfully places the outstanding performances front and center and lets the hard-hitting script carry the load. I also specifically love how the events that took place in the first half of the Kane Mutiny film from 1954, they're not being dramatized here like they were there, but the way that they come out in the various testimonies is really well done and I think gives you a very complete perspective of what went down on the ship and all of the different little things that led up to this point where Merrick felt like he had to relieve Quig of command because it was in the best interest of the rest of the crew. I do still think it's worth seeing the 1954 film, though, because it is one of my favorites. And it will give you even better perspective and understanding of these characters that you will come into this movie with. But this film is incredible. It's captivating work that is extremely entertaining while remaining very challenging as well. I'm really not at all surprised given the pedigree of the filmmaker and the cast. I'm just really thankful for a near perfect companion piece to one of my favorite all time films. I hope that you'll check this out. It is streaming now on Paramount Plus with Showtime. You can see it there. It's worth your time. It's a pretty quick movie. Again, the pacing is just fast and furious. If you like things like A Few Good Men or 12 Angry Men or 
any other movie that is highly, highly focused on courtroom drama or Aaron Sorkin type of dialogue. I think you're going to enjoy the heck out of this. It's well worth your time. Thanks again for watching or listening. I appreciate it. Whichever you're doing, it means the world to us. You can always just flip back and forth because of the content here on YouTube or on the podcast. Whichever one you're currently hearing right now is the same. So we do that to make it easier on you. You can find us wherever it is most convenient. Please like and subscribe wherever you are listening or watching and share us with your friends and family. That would make us very happy as well. I'll be back soon. Until then, keep watching and keep feeling filmed.